I think of rehearsal dinners as the first big family gathering of this highly anticipated thing we call a wedding. This thing they've been planning for nine months, they've been looking forward to for years. The first family gathering of that is the rehearsal dinner. Now they might all be in flip-flops and in shorts and, and uh, you know, casual shirts, but it's a very important day. It's not just a day where they invite the uh, bridal party, their spouses, sometimes their kids are invited as well. Oftentimes, there's family members from uh, the people who are coming in from out of town, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents. They don't come in from out of town and get their hotel room and then they say, well, we'll see you at the wedding. No, they say, come on down to the rehearsal dinner. I've done these rehearsal dinner celebrations with anywhere from 40 to 125 people. It's a big gathering. So why not market it to them and put something together that facilitates their needs? And here's what they need. They need direction. They need a full one hour ceremony walkthrough. It doesn't always last an hour. And those of you who have done this know that we might spend 20 or 30 minutes of that just waiting for one person, right? But the ceremony walkthrough is important. And, and we don't have time obviously to go through all the you know, avenues with regard to ceremony walkthrough. You know how to do those or many of you do. So I thought the first hour would be the ceremony walkthrough. But what can we do that facilitates their needs for the rest of the time? the other two hours that they're at the restaurant. And I came up with some ideas. So what I did is I put together that as part one, the ceremony walkthrough. Part two would be an after dinner oration. Now you don't have to be a professional speaker to do this. It's nice if you know how to speak well, but I know what many wedding planners and facility managers who, who speak great and they're some of the most organized people on the planet. So I went and did a search on Google. And you know if you find it on the internet, it's got to be true, right? <laughs> I found out that there's actual roles and responsibilities for the members of the bridal party. For the maid of honor, you know, they, they help the, the bride with her train. You know, they help sign the marriage certificate. They help get her makeup and all that together. For the best man, he helps make sure the groom is on time and organize, organizes all the uh, groomsmen for pictures and stuff like that and signs a marriage certificate as well. But I also found out that there are certain roles and responsibilities for the bridesmaids and groomsmen. Now this is fascinating stuff. They are the ambassadors of the event. So I thought, why not use them to our advantage? So I do a 10 to 15 minute after dinner oration. Oration is simply a talk. After they've gone through dinner, I let them be a family for 45 minutes, okay? There's usually a few speeches. And then I talk for 10 or 15 minutes, giving the bridal party right there in front of family and friends, all the tips and ideas that they can do to make sure that tomorrow goes very well. And what they are supposed to do as far as these roles and responsibilities is to get out there in the audience and mingle with people. They're not just wearing a nice outfit just to look good. They're there to mingle with people, to help people go to the guest book and sign it if they're not doing it. They're supposed to be actively involved in inter interchanging, intermixing with other people. If there's a photo booth, they're supposed to go out there and grab people and take them over to the photo booth. If there's uh, an elderly person sitting by themselves, go over there and talk to them. These bridesmaids and groomsmen have a great responsibility. If the dance floor is empty, grab some people and come on out to the dance floor. That helps the DJ, it helps the band. It keeps the party active and flowing. It keeps people engaged. So when I've been able to get in front of a microphone or at a rehearsal dinner afterwards and talk to people how they can get these, uh, utilize these bridesmaids and groomsmen to their advantage by making them the ambassadors of the event, they feel empowered. They really want to get in there and help make this event happen and make it succeed. I also use it as a, as a great opportunity to tell people that you know, keep your toast down to a couple minutes. Always make sure to be appropriate. Don't tell stories about past relationships. And I say that right in front of the whole family. So what do you think is gonna happen if somebody gets up there and says something really bizarre? They've been forewarned in front of all their family and friends not to do so. So we make it fun, we make it light. It's not something that we have to, uh, uh, you know, make uh, rigid or too educational because they're never gonna remember everything. So it's a matter of making it fun because no one should ever stress out at a rehearsal dinner. They shouldn't stress through the ceremony walkthrough. They shouldn't stress, you know, during the time that we're doing this oration. 
So that's part two is the oration. And part three is some fun and games. There's, I come from the, the music industry and a lot of people have tried over the years to put together a rehearsal dinner uh, party. And it's not dancing that they want. It's not karaoke that they want. They want some fun and games. You can do anything from minute to win it to little game show things. So what I did for after dinner, we do that after dinner oration, and then for 45 minutes or an hour, I put together a couple game shows. I put together a unique game that I created myself called the Bride and Groom Trivia Challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I did is I put the bridesmaids up against the groomsmen, the moms up against each other, and the dads as well, in a family feud style thing to find out who knows more about the bride and groom. And it's hilariously fun. They have a great time with it. It's always clean, it's always G-rated, but people are yelling out the answers and shouting them out. There's always one winning, time, uh, one winning team, and it's usually the girls. <laughs> the girls are usually, the, the bride side usually wins because they know more about the bride than guys care to know about their buddies. And then afterwards, we do the pre-newlywed game. You, you might have seen it, or some people know it as the shoe game, where you put the bride and groom back to back, and they uh, uh, you ask them questions about how well they know each other. Just a couple lighthearted games. Like I said, you could do minute to win it or something else like that. Any wedding coordinator, facility manager who's outgoing can do this. It's just a matter of putting together the ceremony walkthrough, have an after-dinner oration that lasts 15 or 20 minutes, and you're just there to direct and facilitate. And then maybe a little bit of game show fun for 45 minutes. I sell these packages between $400 and $800. And people are all over them. They love it. And I also train and coach wedding professionals across the United States on how to do this. I've got hundreds of people under my coaching that have gone out and now they have a rehearsal dinner package. Start thinking along the lines of B-siding this and doing something really unique. Put together a rehearsal dinner package that is more than simply the ceremony walkthrough. I truly believe rehearsal dinners are the greatest untapped revenue stream in the wedding industry. Thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you.